so we will learn about the standard thermodynamic processes we already got an insight of this last time when we were dealing with gas process representation we will now learn to analyze these processes first let's look at the isothermal process clearly by the name implies the net change in temperature will be zero which implies that temperature is constant in a thermodynamic process this thing holds this is because of the above fact and the equation of state which says pv equal to nrt we know that n and r will remain for a fixed uh, will remain constant for a fixed quantity of gas and we are additionally imposing a condition that t is remaining constant so this entire thing is becoming constant and hence this is coming about because t is constant we will also be having this quantity reaching zero this is because the delta u we we figured out this to be as this and this is going to zero implying that delta u will be zero because delta u is zero the first law of th thermodynamics we learned gets reduced to this so this is the basic uh, properties of of a isothermal process let us learn to represent that on the graph if we draw a pv diagram and we know that pv is a constant this constant being nrt we can represent p as a function of v like this so p and v are related inversely this is a typical hyperbola so this process is a hyperbola on the pv graph the equation of this hyperbola is p into some constant times 1 by v this constant is nothing but n r now we know how p and v are related we know how the graph looks like let us now find out what are the relevant thermodynamic quantities for an isothermal process we said that delta u is going to be zero we are remaining with q and w to determine q we can easily say that if we determine w then we already did get q determined so how do we find out w we can simply integrate it over a finite volume by the function of p we know we know that this function of p is here nrt by v times dv and this has to be integrated from vi to vf nrt being constant can be taken out of the integral and we will be remaining with dv by v which when integrated will give us ln v so we have nrt ln vf by vi so this is the work done in an isothermal process and this is also same as the heat transfer in the process heat transfer here is to the system and work done is by the system as per the normal sign conventions in an isothermal process we already al also said that pv remains constant and by this logic we can say that the initial pressure times the initial volume is going to give us the final pressure times the final volume from this we can also write this to be nrt times ln of pi by pf
because we have determined this, we can find out what Q is. So we have delta U determined, delta uh, W determined and Q also determined. Let us now look at another process known as the adiabatic process. In an adiabatic process, the first thing that defines an adiabatic process is the heat transfer which is going to be zero in an adiabatic process. Because this is zero, our first law now gets reduced to with a negative sign. Now when we do this, a question can cre creep in our mind as to how this can be achieved. This can be achieved in two ways. The first way is you insulate the system. If you insulate the system thermally, then we can ensure that there is no net heat transfer going on. Another way of doing is you imply a fast process. So let's say we have a piston cylinder arrangement and I suddenly push the piston by some distance. That will result in a process in which no net heat transfer is taking place, but the net work done or the work done by the gas or on the gas, this net work done is going to get converted directly to some internal energy. So if you look at this equation, if the work done is, uh, this is by the system, we will have a net negative change of internal energy and if this is done on the system, this becomes negative, this negative cancels out with this negative and we get a net positive change in internal energy of the system. Now, having said this, we can now find out the relevant quantities which are pertaining to an adiabatic process. Before we do that, just like in the isothermal process, an adiabatic process follows this relation. Gamma here is the adiabatic constant. That is how this got its name. This is however not the only relation. We can also write this as Tv to the power gamma minus 1. This also remains constant. And we can also write it as t to the power gamma into p to the power 1 minus gamma. This also, this product also remains constant. These can be easily derived if you just replace p with nRT by v or v with nRT by p. You will get these two relations. If this is the case and we have found that work done is nothing but minus delta u, we can say that work done now becomes minus n C V delta T. We can further simplify this or make this more available in terms of the parameters if we just replace C V with its proper value. So work done can be written as minus n, Cv can be written as r by gamma minus 1 and delta t can be replaced with the proper change in temperature. Now n r delta t, this is nothing but minus n r times the final temperature minus the initial temperature. This is going to be gamma minus 1. Now n r t f is nothing but Pf multiplied with Vf. Similarly, Ti into Nr is going to give us Pi multiplied with Vi. So this becomes minus Nr Tf plus Nr Ti divided by gamma minus 1 and this is equal to Pi Vi minus Pf Vf divided by gamma minus 1. So this is the work done in 
an adiabatic process. This work done taken negative will also give us the internal energy change of the system by this relation. From this, let us read some conclusions regarding some very interesting concepts. 